the movie Wedding Crashers came out the year I got married. My first reaction was to call Tony, my buddy from high school, and say, yo, they made a movie about us. <laughs> After he saw it, he called me back like, ha, we were the original. That was some crazy, stupid <laughs> shit. I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know why they did it. But for us, put it this way. Say it's early 1995, and you're 17, and you're me. <laughs> and you're at the park, you know, drinking. It's Vancouver, so it's cold, and the beer runs out. And you lose paper, rock, scissors. Say Tony comes with you. And even though he pulls his talk, you're carded and turned away. So you step out there, and across the street is Fraser View Hall, where they hold the Punjabi weddings. You're not Punjabi, but Tony is. And he says something along the lines of, open bar, warmth, chicks and saris, bhangra, tandoori chicken, open bar. <laughs> you can almost hear the music and the liquor over ice. Back at the Twins Park, we called it that because it was by their house. That's how we named all the little parks in the neighborhood. Anyway, back at their park, when them and Ranveer were laughing and squinting at the bag that wasn't in my hand, I turned to them like, shut up, you sister fucking brown jacks. We are crashing a wedding reception. <laughs> One of the twins said, asshole guys, you're crazy. And Tony tried to make it seem easy, like, I've been to a few, man. Nobody shows up carrying invitations. The halls are huge. There's no way anyone knows everyone. All we gotta do is put on suits and show the fuck up. <laughs> the twins weren't convinced. You'll get busted for sure. What are you gonna do, just like be brown and hope for the best? Apparently, yes. <laughs> the good thing about being in grade 12 is we had suits. We made a run to get them. Though they weren't coming, the twins let us change in their basement. Ranveer tied all the ties because he was the type of guy you told to be ready for 5 p.m. if the party was at 7 p.m. By the time we left, we were buzzing again, a combination of nerves and gel smell and Dracar Noir. So, on the first attempt, it was Tony and Ranveer stepping into the Fraser View parking lot and me asking, uh, if somebody asks, are we with the bride or the groom? What are you, stupid? The groom, of course. We're like guys and shit. <laughs> Ranveer was usually the brains. I was the jack of all trades and Tony was the gumption. What are you, stupid? He said as we came up on the building, it's not like we're in the wedding party. We say we're on the bride's side. No Punjabi is crazy enough to pretend to be a guy friend of the bride, so that's what the fuck we'll do. <laughs> it made sense to me. But when we got up the stairs and into the bright lit foyer, my first instinct was to duck into the washroom and then duck out. No washroom. No one stopped us, so we just kept walking forward through the double doors, and it was huge. Now, nervous makes me hungry, so I thought of the food, but that's the direction that most of the tables were, though with like people in the chairs and stuff. <laughs> the buffet closing was actually a good idea. It meant the house lights were down and the disco lights were on. <laughs> For some reason, our dumb luck made me fear made me feel more confident. Tony was shaking hands with someone, second hand over the first hand, three shakes, saying a respectful sasrikal. And I followed suit. My sasrikals not only sounded forced, but I added the honorific G and said sasrikal G to a woman under 30, pretty much calling her grandma. 
Still, we were almost halfway to the bar, and no one was even staring, not even her. Three Bacardi and Cokes, Tony ordered. We were in. <laughs> 20 minutes, and it seemed like if we hung around the bar but not too close, we could pretty much chill and drink. Low profile and shit, I said to Ranveer. He shouted, yeah, check out the girl in the blue sari in the back. The bhangra music was in full swing. The sugar doll rhythms were catching on. And then Tony, who had gone to the washroom, walked back to us arm over shoulder with a man about as old as my pops and with the same mustache. And the man said, Are these your buddies? Get down. It was like, what's up? He didn't even use the second hand to handshake. Crown and coke for my nephews. No. No sipping. Drink it, buddy. <laughs> Down it. <laughs> and he dragged us on the dance floor. <laughs> we all yelled, forming a circle. Ranveer was in checkout mode. I was trying to pick up the moves, and soon I had translated my kid in play steps into the Bhangra style. <laughs> I turned to tell Tony what a genius he was, but he was gone. I hit Ranveer on the arm. Seconds later, he pointed. Tony was up on stage, one foot on the bridal party chair, the second stepping on the table. He was waving a handkerchief in one hand even before he found his balance, hopping arms to the ceiling, doing the unscrew the light bulb move. <laughs> Fuck. And then there was a great grandpa up on stage limping toward Tony with his cane and shouting. Tony was coming down. Thank God, I thought. Nope. That Bubba Bubba G was handing Tony his cane and Tony was helping this hundred year old man <laughs> with a beard wider than his shoes climb up the chair and onto the table that was at the edge of the stage. I was sure he would fall or the table would collapse, already imagining the conversation with the cops, like, uh, no, officer, we weren't invited. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we just thought we'd come through. No, sir, we didn't think he would actually lift up his cane and start bouncing on the table with one leg. Dumb luck again, Bubba G let out a proper 100 year old <laughs> and managed not to fall off the table. It took two of his nieces and a nephew a full extender remix to get him down. <laughs> when Tony came back to join us, dance circles of families opened up to let us in. Things were going well, too well. We had gone from slipping in unnoticed to the most visible motherfuckers in there <laughs> who weren't the happy couple. Some, somebody said, you guys are awesome. And someone else was throwing up like a gida, gida. But not all of them were, were like full on cheers. Some of them had like a, who the hell are these guys under their what's up? Tony yelled, Let's pick up the bride and groom and put them on our shoulders, swaying side to side. Ranveer looked at me. We knew we had to leave. <laughs> My next memory is us laughing our way back to the Twins Park. So I think we got out of there as clean as we could. We crashed a dozen weddings at least after that. <laughs> Other friends joined. But that one was the best. Most of what we learned that mattered was a carryover from that first night. <laughs> like the best time to arrive, after the speeches, unless you really want to eat. The best trick to getting allies is to tell an uncle that you are Sandu's son, you know, from the old mill. Like 90% of the men in the neighborhood had worked there. <laughs> Anything that shows up a big shot or a close relative is a bad idea. No scraps. 
What kind of asshole crashes a wedding and scraps a family member? We almost did. <laughs> the last time we crashed a wedding, the crew was still tight, but things were beginning to fray. Little things. Even the wrong turns on the way to the hall that night had us a little bit on edge. We arrived proper late. On the dance floor, I caught sight of the woman who supervised our crew at the community center. It's true. Volunteers by day, wedding crashers by night. <laughs> I was like, how do you, who do you know here? I asked, and she was like, Jag, of course. Jag, Jag? Yes, her boss, our big boss, neighborhood community center, Jag. <laughs> she was engaged to his brother-in-law, and we randomly had crashed an actual friend's wedding. <laughs> I hurried to the bar. Guys, this is fucking like Jag's wedding. We gotta go. <laughs> Tony was like, ha, Juggy, that motherfucker should have invited us. <laughs> Ranveer was on my side. There's cuties everywhere, but yeah, one dance, we got a book. We ran into Jag on the dance floor. I'm sure now that he regrets ask, acting happy to see us. <laughs> so glad you guys made it, he shouted, as, we, as if we had just forgotten to RSVP. <laughs> we threw him on our shoulders and paraded him around. In short, we stayed. Eventually, trying to pick up the brother-in-law, a tall, well-built RCMP officer guy who didn't want to be picked up. <laughs> and we physically insisted. <laughs> and halfway up, he was still trying to get free. And then he did. And when he landed, he broke his ankle. I'm pretty sure one of us had already said fuck off to someone important, and I know for sure that Ranveer threw up with witnesses, but these didn't compare to dropping the brother-in-law and breaking his ankle. We had messed up, as we would say back then, nicely. My wedding was pretty small. At first, it had been something both of us agreed we were doing for the families, but then it grew into my partner's dream. Still small, but intricate. I was in, sort of. And then at the reception, one of my buddies from back in the Crasher Jack days took over the DJ booth with Bangra. The Filipinos in my family, the white folks in hers, everyone got into it. It would have been okay, but me and the boys took over the little hall and kept on going. It was like I forgot it was our wedding and felt more like a crasher than a groom. And the worst thing was that the person I married felt that way as well. Crashing a wedding can bring an element of the uninvited abandon that leads to like a bubba G up on the table. And maybe the family has that memory and tells that anecdote, but it has no real effect on the marriage itself. All those times we left a reception laughing, it was just about us that youngster wished to celebrate without true participation, a peripheral love, one to be found on the edges. It was only looking back at my own marriage falling apart that I wondered about how things went for the couples in all those weddings I crashed. Here is a small little blah for them, a blessing, and blah to the boys from back then. It wasn't actually those crazy times that made us a real crew. <laughs>